it's wonderful to uh, be in the Marino Experience Center. Let me start by thanking Foyd and Marino for uh, inviting all of us for this Creative Minds Meet, which is going to focus on a very important topic of how traditional materials can be used in contemporary design. And uh, let me congratulate them for hosting this event. Uh, the setting is very beautiful. Uh, we are in the Marino Experience Center in Pune, uh, where some wonderful innovative products by Marino have been showcased. And it's a must visit by architects and interior designers for you know, trying out new things. Uh, let me begin by uh, some introductions. Uh, we have some very senior architects and interior designers from Pune to talk on this very specific theme of old meeting the new. Uh, so I would request uh, Subodh to do a small introduction about him and then we'll just go in a clockwise direction. Okay, thank you Rahul. Uh, I will introduce myself. I am architect Subodh Sapatnekar. I am principal architect and founder member of Environs Architects, the firm based in Pune and Dubai. We are a group of professionals and we are working last uh, more than three decades, we are working together and we believe in teamwork. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Rahul sir. Uh, it was very wonderful, uh, you know, the start what you uh, giving us. Uh, myself, architect Vikas Shevare, uh, founder and principal architect for Conquer Designs Private Limited. Uh, I've been practicing from last 21 years uh, as an architect. Uh, doing a lot of projects, Pan India, as well as some international projects I do. Uh, I believe the architecture has uh, some philosophy, uh, which we have to put it on the paper and create the wonder. That is what uh, I always believe. I am architect Sarang Doshi, uh, partner of Design Consultants Architects uh, based out of Pune. Uh, we have been in the business for more than uh, two decades now. And we have been working in uh, almost more than uh, 35 cities uh, across India. Uh, hi, I'm Chirak Sonegra, interior designer. I'm principal designer for Chirak Sonegra interior firm. We are practicing last two decades in Pune, Pune based firm. And we are into luxurious apartments and villas. And that's it. Thanks Marino and Foyt for inviting us for this event. Hi, I'm architect Unmesh Mistri. Uh, thank you, Foyt. Marino and Rahulji, thanks a lot. Uh, I am uh, uh, the principal architect of uh, Design Cube. Uh, I have a, a team uh, partner, we can say, the architect Satish Nivedya and my son, architect Kunal Mistri, is also recently joined. And uh, we, our uh, firm is almost 32 years old. We are doing all sorts of architecture and interior projects. Uh, we believe uh, that we want to improve or uh, change the lifestyle of our clients. So, uh, I'll just introduce myself briefly. My name is Rahul Kadam. Uh, our firm is called the NGK Studio. NGK Studio stands for Nature's Green Kinesthetics. We are driven by beautiful movements in nature. And we are a 10-year-old firm. So given these uh, introductions, uh, it's very interesting to see that all of us come from a dynamic range of cross-sections of the practice. So I want to start by this sketch. Uh, this obviously is done by me. Uh, to uh, honor the craftswomen and men of India, who in my view represent the old wisdom and the devotional quality of work they do. And there is such rich diversity in our country that I feel uh, we need to integrate that in our work. So <clears throat> in our uh, studio, we try our best to integrate that. And in, in my view, that's the best way of how the old should meet the new. Um, so, I want to just dive into a few projects which are a result of this philosophy. This is a courtyard, very small courtyard, 344 square feet courtyard done in Ahmedabad by 
China mosaic work from women from Rajasthan. So they were actually put every chip in white cement to create this beautiful courtyard, which has a surreal character <coughs> of, uh, you know, it's a place where, you know, students can sit. Yeah, it's attached to the Gujarat Law Society ladies wing. And this is the kind of uh, setting that old skills can bring for a modern day facility. Then we come to <clears throat> this peacock, which is done using the latest CNC technique. This is 17 meters long, done for a corporate boardroom. Uh, it has a very different energy. It brings out the Indian ethos uh, because the client wanted that kind of setting. But the polishing and everything has been done by a Rajasthani craftsmen. And here you can see the aura of the peacock as it kind of goes around the space and how we can fuse the sophistication of CNC and handcrafting really comes out here and the floor is again uh, done by a craftsman so it actually becomes like a spatial mirror to reflect the aura of the peacock <coughs> or for that matter these murals which we have done in an office which are two floors high Again, uh, you know, using CNC and very intricate patterns of tongue and groove joints uh, in a radiating manner. So the whole thing looks like a ripple, a bindu, as if you have thrown a stone in water. And again, here you can see the semblance of how the old and new have come together. <laughs> and then this tree of life where we wanted to salute the sky. So the, um, the, the there is uh, polished granite on honed granite and the combination is again done using latest technology and hand skills and literally one looks from down to up and feels like saluting the sky and then we go to some more formal spaces and this is a courtyard of a facility for transformation management where you're welcomed by this pebble court and concrete, but within concrete we have these traditional patterns which are done by Rajasthani craftsmen, the quota flooring, Jaisalmer, and the courtyards are interspersed with bamboo. And this whole courtyard comes to light with, uh, to life with this beautiful quality of natural light uh, and it is because of this semblance of the old and new that the courtyard gets a paradigm of time and keeps changing its mood through the day. <clears throat> Here you can see a little bit of intricate detailing of how the bamboo sits on the beam. There are electrical wires which run through that in the, and in the night this bamboo pergola gets lit. And then there are these pavilions within the facility where you can sit and have meetings which are made out of bamboo. This is our forte into respecting sustainability because bamboo is a very sustainable material. It's a glass. So we thought we should try out that to give a notion of shade. <clears throat> and then this is a school we have done using grit plaster and ACP. Uh, so grit again is a very traditional technique, it's a permanent finish and the entire school sits right in the middle of trees. It's, it was an adaptive reuse project, so without cutting a single tree we've actually made sure that the building uh, respects the context. So I think one very important aspect in bringing old and new together is to be as sustainable as possible and this is one example of that. And here you can see that the entire facade is literally crafted. Every single line talks to another. Uh, but it is truly where both the sides of old and new have come together to create what it is. <clears throat> here you can see the enlarged detailing of how glass, the modern day materials, ACP and grid plaster come together and how the articulation of the grooves uh, give a beautiful tactile quality to the facade. So all this, uh, you know, gives me a lot of hope uh, 
Uh, that's why the tree of life is there with hope, rays of hope coming through it, uh, which tells me that there is uh, immense potential of coming, of bringing old and new together because of the rich diversity uh, that we have in India. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it is very motivating for the craftsmen and women to be given that platform. And I have seen in spaces where this marriage has happened successfully, the space really touches the human sense. It has a subconscious effect on the human being. And uh, I think uh, if the space can touch your heart, then the brain, I think then the space is really a sensitive space. I think we'll now start with the Q&A part. So let's start with the Q&A. Uh, my first question is, um, how do you fuse the old and new in your work? And what are the challenges that you face? Uh, so, Subodh, let's start with you. Uh, so I will tell you, uh, the first challenge which I have faced in my practice, that is after completing my 12 to 10 years practice, I think uh, I remember it's 2000 or 2002. Uh, when we appointed as uh, uh, designers to re refer for refurbishment, then renovation and restoration of Bela Vista. The Bela Vista is a uh, Nijam's uh, palace. It is a uh, hundred years old, uh, more than hundred years old building, and uh, it's a uh, basically uh, uh, it's a uh, ASCII, it's Administrative Staff College of India. It is called as Administrative Staff College of India ASCII. It's a IS training center, and. Uh, uh, when we got the job, I was really confused. Uh, though I was excited to do it, but I was really confused. Uh, because the Bella Vista, it's called a beautiful view. It means beautiful view. And it was a royal palace. Uh, and uh, 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 Nijam's wife, uh, she was, I think, uh, daughter of uh, uh, this uh, old Khalifa's, uh, last Khalifa from Turkey. And she had given the special royal touch to that particular palace. So there were huge amount of painting, display paintings, then carpet pieces, everything was there. And uh, the, uh, the basically the, it's a 10 acre land and uh, about more than uh, almost 50, 60,000 square foot palace was there. And uh, when we started the work, first thing what I did, I, I checked what are the uh, display paintings and what, what are the types of paintings and what are the types of carpets, everything I checked. Because there are so many constraints. The constraint was the first, uh, our first job was to convert the Nijam's bedroom into training room and the ballroom into audiovisual room. That was our first uh, this job. So uh, when we started the work, there was I was confused because of the debrief was given by the Dean of Studies and uh, the principal. And there are the main constraints were the two, uh, renovate the old hardwood flooring, then to deal with the large amount of light which was introduced through the la large scale windows and arched windows uh, paired with the doors, doorways. Uh, then uh, there was a, a huge challenge because for the HVAC because high ceilings uh, uh, were there and uh, to deal with the echo issues and the uh, to locate the all the display paintings uh, and the car carpet pieces. Then wh what I did, we started with the uh, one pattern. We created one pattern, we selected one first veneer which is matching to the old flooring and the uh, old doors and we created one pattern for the acoustical treatment. Then we uh, selected one uh, royal color, uh, this uh, cloth uh, which was covered uh, with for the acoustical tiles. And also, we located this particular spaces for all the paintings and also for the carpets because carpets are converted into acoustical material for absorption. And for aesthetics, the, uh, it, the uh, paintings were displayed. So, we also added some other uh, things uh, like we converted the dining hall, uh, this large room into dining hall. Then we uh, uh, proposed some areas attached to dining hall along with the swimming pool which can be converted into this uh, tea break. So finally, we could achieve, we could maintain, we could uh, restore the basic historical values and elements at certain extent and uh, keeping the uh, respect to the original character 
of the palace uh, and adopting the new use. The uh, purpose of this is uh, converting a bedroom into training room and the ballroom into the... Uh, so this was my experience. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, I just uh, want to add on this uh, similar pattern. Uh, even I designed one uh, palace that is in Jamkhandi. So uh, the client approached me and it was a old, it's a Patwardhan's uh, uh, palace. So they approached me and they said, uh, we want to, this is a heritage property and we want to retain as it is, but use a modern material. So uh, being an architect, we always feel that, you know, palace look like a palace not a modern right but uh, there are some certain requirements from the client and which we have to fulfill that time what we did we 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 always feel that this is the material and what is the alternative material you know so instead of uh, you know uh, cut down from uh, the traditional method and adding a completely new contemporary so we made up some solutions for that so then we use good stones which is you know related to that uh, contemporary uh, and the old uh, traditional material goes hand in hand so uh, most of the places we add on that most of the places we use wood most of the places we use stained glass windows to retain as it is but give that you know old come adding on adding on some new material so that was a good experience what uh, super sir has you know added on uh, similar pattern uh, uh, right from the entrance to end of the project, uh, whenever the that client enters that premises, he uh, he feel that okay, this is my palace, but now I can use as a you know uh, modern uh, uh, style. So that was you know uh, the experience I had. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, I remember one of my experiences in uh, Jaipur, uh, wherein of course it was not a fort, uh, <laughs> but it was a bank, and. Uh, because the bank being in Jaipur, it has to reflect the characteristics yeah. of the city. And that's what we have been doing. Uh, we have been doing Access Bank all over India. And this was in Jaipur. So we always wanted that character of the city to be reflected into the bank. And Jaipur being Jaipur and you know such a tradition. Uh, so what we did initially was like, you know, we went to some of the forts, uh, did some photography, tried to capture some elements from, from the forts. Um, and then uh, we thought, you know, how can we uh, fuse, you know, such a old tradition of Jali work of Rajasthan uh, to Axis Bank. And Axis Bank just, you know, converted from uh, UTI to Axis. So they were a new brand. And here we are talking about Jali, which is like centuries old. So we fused that Jali work along with glass. And... Uh, of course, I mean, as everybody knows that, you know, the commercial projects are like hardly you get 45 to 60 days. So instead of putting in craftsmen, we took the, the feature of the jallies and we laser cut it on the veneer. So we used a lot of wood there to bring in the warmth because that's what they wanted to portray as a brand. Uh, so there's something called as brand personality, which needs to reflect through your work. So, uh, so we... Of, of course, we went in for uh, pinkish shade uh, apart apart from the white, which normally otherwise we use because pinkish shade is definitely not something which people would expect in a bank. But again, to the respecting the context, uh, we we went for that, and uh, then it has come up really well. I mean, uh, the jali work along with the glass, we were a little hesitant about you know putting both the things next to each other, but uh, ultimately we could uh, do it properly, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So I remember one of my projects in Pune where like uh, father and son, they have two different views. One is old and one is new. So generation the guy, generation gap you can say. And the father wanted the structure to be remain the same. And the son wants like I want a total modernized theme for my bungalow and all that stuff. So we started with the natural marble floor and then we added some veneer on the staircase, some colorful glasses on the staircase to give a reflection on the staircase area and everything. So we uh, maintained the, this thing, the old structure and then we just developed into the modernized type with adding veneer and everything. So now they are leaving it happily. I have a, a different story to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got a project uh, which is completely in rural area, uh, completely in nature. Uh, 
nowadays we observe that the traditional way of uh, making the house rural house uh, was very different uh, using the uh, natural material and sustainable material and nowadays people are they started using uh, tin sheets on the roof and concrete and so the the, the culture of uh, uh, the village uh, is gone now so we took a challenge and we made a project uh, uh, we decided to make a project using the traditional material traditional method and um, uh, first of all the challenge was to get the labor uh, who previously used to work with wood and mud and cow dung and all so we started doing research on it uh, my son, he stayed uh, with uh, uh, Amte, Dr. Amte for, for a week and then he studied the method, what they used to use over there uh, for the tribals and all. Uh, and then we uh, did a study uh, how to use it in this type of culture and a, and a modern way. So, uh, made a uh, structure using gunny bag and mud, bamboos as a uh, uh, the, we can say purlin and everything, thatch roof, and lime and cow dung, uh, cow dung plaster. The structure is absolutely sustainable, and it is looking beautiful. <laughs> so it is a very different challenge. Using using the traditional and local material in a, a different format and using the same concept. I mean, you know, the old method. That is a good. It is uh, more difficult. Yeah, it is very difficult. It was, but uh, it was very nice and fun. And Looked roughly how much time it uh, took to complete yeah. this. Uh, uh, because of the finance, we can say it took six months almost. Yes. Is it a single storage or two storage? It's a single storage, right? So one of the projects we recently did, a um, very large project for uh, automobile company. Uh, we have used rat trap bond, which was invented by Laurie Baker. And the biggest challenge was that nobody knew how to do rat trap bond. <laughs> so I had to write to the institute, of Laurie Baker Institute in Trivandrum and get all the material and we had to do a training course at site and teach the principal contractor that this is how rod trap bond is done. But then there was tremendous saving in material, almost 17% material saving was there and we have got a heat saving of about 8 degrees because of the cavity. Let's move to the next question. What are the, uh, what are your favorite materials given this philosophy of old meeting new? Um, and could you reflect on the design process that you use to integrate old and new uh, in your work? There are many materials we use uh, normally, mosaic, terrazzo, uh, stucco, um, stonework, inlays, uh, but my favorite is exposed brick. The first, it is easily available, uh, can be used inside, can be used outside, can be used for the economical uh, uh, projects and can be used for the higher projects. So for me, my natural products, like I love using marble, veneers and every all natural products, it be, gives a beauty, warm to your projects. It's like uh, even you can use your tandoor, I have used tandoor on the wall clads, it gives a different shades of color. You, you can use kota, you can use natural marble. Like nowadays, everyone is using marble for their wall clad, TV units and everything, even for bed back. Right. But due to new projects, like we are facing many problems in Mumbai or Pune, now there are dry walls. So don't sustain that weight of that marble. or So the, again, the comp new products have started with PU stones, which gives you natural effect, like natural stone effect, rough effect and everything. So natural and, and sometimes even we have made dyes of that tandoor and the rough stone and we have created in POP and we fix it on a wall. 
so it gives a natural look on the wall and you can just spray and paint again there is new material like uh, you can say paints like italian paints you give same natural look for the, we can use it as a concrete also so this is I, my major projects are into marble and veneers and everything major into natural products sarin so your views on yeah so as far as the material is concerned i would go with the mesh uh, brick is something which mm-hmm. i love uh, along with uh, cement gotai probably so uh, that gives you a feel of calmness somewhere you know uh, down there and uh, one more thing which uh, probably i love more is the distressed um finish on the paints so that is something which we have been trying on few of our projects uh, initially we had some challenges because some of our craftsmen uh, the painters were not aware how to get that but then uh, what we did was you know we uh, there was a kind of a uh, wooden cladding at, uh, at at on a wall so we wanted to give that distressed uh, effect on it so we ourselves you know did one uh, wall for them and they just watched us doing and then they could understand you know how, how what kind of finish we are looking at and ultimately now they are trained i mean so we don't have to really worry about it uh, so we just give them uh, that these are the two shades where we we, we want the distressed uh, uh, effect and they take care uh, for us How about you yeah uh, i agree with uh, sarang um, so i have a, a different take on on this uh, uh, uh i like all kind of materials as an architect and i have to use as per the client choice and the location of the site so uh, my favorite material if you would say i like exposed concrete so my uh, most of the pro- project i you know uh, recommend you use exposed concrete concrete work and that is what you know somehow i feel that this is something different design straight line design with the raw effect and gives you that warmness in my design and other areas are there where clients is no we want to have a complete contemporary designs where we have to use all natural material like from the marble the veneers the deco paints a different kind of you know paint we have to use different kind of marbles we have to use so uh, uh, as per what i feel as an architect uh, i would recommend to go with the traditional way uh, add on some modern concept in terms of material selection so that is uh, uh, i feel for a design point of view we have to do it so about your thoughts on this uh, actually we had done one formula for this we call it as a bsw with gsc so uh, what is bsw that is a brick uh, stone and wood that is a oil and glass steel and concrete because every material has different character Yeah, if you see the glass it has a transparency which uh, against the solid uh, brick and stone it looks nice uh, same thing concrete it is if you, for modern it is uh, if it is polished it looks nice at the same time for the historical this thing it is a rustic and rough finish also uh, that is also it looks nice. so every material has different character stone is having permanency and uh, sense of history same thing is brick so we try to use uh, for every side and as per the clients we try to use that and it gives a visual appeal and uh, contrast so i think i'm just trying to, not everywhere i'm using the same thing but i'm trying to yeah so i resonate with most of you uh, in our work also we use a lot of exposed concrete as you must have seen in the visuals uh, the recent project we've done in chakan Uh, for a large industrial setup where we use rat trap burn we use wire cut brick we use lot of kota stone jaisalmer stone um, but uh, what i have realized is that uh, you know the challenge has always been that modern day contractors don't have that skill sets so what we do is uh, especially for large public projects uh, we do one is to one scale mock ups yeah. and study the mock up in detail so that becomes like a template uh, so that the thing can be done properly and a uh, lot of time is spent understanding the why behind that particular material uh, because um, then only you as an architect or a designer can bring out the best um, and uh, that's where uh, 
the new architects who are coming <laughs> have to be honed into doing that. Uh, but uh, once you understand the material, then I think uh, you know using it at a large scale uh, or even at a small scale becomes easy. Uh, so that's how we kind of. No, uh, Oji, I agree with you. I mean, each and every product, if you have the mock-up then you can see from your eyes and you know see okay this is the perfect finishing comes and you can you know uh, give guidance to vendor also to do this way otherwise what happened we put it on a paper you can have a beautiful 3d views web fantastic look like what about the execution so that mock-up is very important and so the peacock that i showed you at 17 meters long so we did a small mock-up on 8 by 4 and every joint is stitch joint. Uh, it's birch ply, which is 25 mm. So we planned the joints on the 8 by 4 template. And then we made the main CNC drawings and then the joints were planned. Then we did the lay on the floor and then it was brought to site. Even cotton steel is a very good material. It, uh, it goes with both the yeah. Old and new, that is a very good matter. So, in the, with the reference with the old and new, uh, is it um, the brick and stone and wood we can consider as a old and the concrete is a new material? What do you feel? I think concrete is a old material. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Is How old is it? No, it is not very, it is very, very old. Actually, uh, all used to be in line. Uh, 45, 55. In India, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I would say concrete. Building in Brut, you know, that concept that Lee Corbusier yeah. in the yeah. modern school So, it's how old it is? 50 years. Not much. So, concrete used as aesthetics is not so old. Huh. But before Lee Corbusier also, concrete yeah. was used. Used, I mean, that is exposed concrete. That is exposed. The material Put probably it, it existed. Existed. I mean. Uh, definitely strengthened material is there. That's reason you can have the high rise buildings. <laughs> right. Okay. So, very interesting set of views coming up. Uh, let's move to the next question um, and the question is uh, how easy or difficult it is to educate your clients because they pay the money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on embracing this philosophy of old meeting the new um, and I'm sure we all have some interesting anecdotes for that. So, so let's start with yeah. you. I think uh, very few clients they are aware of real philosophy of uh, old and they are always confused. But we, uh, it, uh, actually, instead of convincing them, if we uh, explain properly okay, what is the importance of traditional values, wisdom, techniques, and how they are utilized for the foundations of the new modern uh, technology, I think uh, they will be convinced. So my thinking is, if we uh, properly explain to them, uh, it's very easy to proceed with that. Yeah, uh, so uh, definitely uh, sometimes it's good to convince, I mean easy to convince our client and sometimes it's very difficult to convince our client. Uh, some clients are quite educated to understand the what is old material and what is new material. So I just give you one example. I did one project uh, that is in uh, Sangli district. Uh, the, I did one village. So, big village I developed. So, uh, some of people called me from US and said they want to develop their village. Okay. There were a group of like 10 people, they called me and uh, their concept was to, you know, do the modern village. Okay. So, I just thought, what is modern village? Okay. Uh, then, you know, our discussion start. I visited their place. So, this is called, I don't know, uh, Mudewadi is the name of that village and that comes, you know, Atpadi Taluka. I visited there, I have uh, seen, I've, I spent two days over there, I've seen each and everything. The village is village and you know, it's a typical traditional village, we'll have a, you know, uh, stone walls and you know, bamboo roofs and and I really liked it. Why don't you, you know, written as it is too. But the, these people, they wanted to give them something, you know, modern and contemporary look, okay. Why? Because of they wanted to give them some, uh, you know, facilities. Uh, modern facilities in that village. Then I convinced them, what is the necessity of that village? You you want a good school, you want a good sanitation over there, you want a good road, you want a good, you know, education system, hospital or PSC is there. 
So we had a complete case study. I mean, you know, uh, I'll just cut down the story of this. What I did, I gave them a facility in the traditional way, using the local material. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's come up very nicely using same material, low cost solution and giving the modern look. So right from the entrance gate, then we have a pathways, nobody could uh, enter your car inside. We have there, you know, vending machines, you can, you know, take the uh, tickets, enter and see the entire village in that way. So involving the client is very important and client education is something which is like part of the design. Because if at all you are, you know, uh, within your mind, you're growing on the ideas and if the client is just left behind, it becomes very difficult at one point where, you know, you're done with everything and suddenly you're presenting it to the client and then probably because he also needs to sleep with the idea and, you know, develop uh, the concept which is being developed should be known to him. So my personal experience on one of our project was the brief uh, we got from, again, it was a corporate office, uh, but owned by a family. So they wanted to have that uniqueness to the office also. Uh, so the brief was like, don't make it like, you know, workstations all over and we want a character to the, uh, to the place. And uh, again, they were into manufacturing, mechanical industry. So they said, make it look like a manufacturer's corporate office. So we said, okay, let's try and do that. So we tried to, we have given a completely industrial look to it, uh, so exposed concrete and concrete finish tiles and all. But then this guy started um, coming, came up with the idea that I want to have a reception, which is very different. Then we talked about a lot of materials and we tried to convince him this would look different. And this guy was not in tune with what we were thinking. So he started coming up saying, put glass, put neon signs, you know, but that is not different. And that is definitely not reflecting uh, a manufacturing company's, uh, uh, you know, backdrop to the reception. So then uh, the, we tried something different and uh, it took a lot of time for us to convince him to go ahead with it. So what we did is we actually took MS sheet and we washed it with acid and we just kept it like that. Uh, he was out of India, he came back and in between uh, uh, the project, he just visited the site and then said, what is going on And we said, that's it. <laughs> so he was, no, are you sure? He said, that's it, this is the nose of my, my office and you're going to keep it like that? Uh, we, of course, we said, yes, of course, this is what we have actually planned. So we said, okay, let everything get completed and if you don't like then we can think of, you know, something else, we can finish it with some other materials or something that sort. But then everything was in line with, uh, you know, the industrial uh, kind of look. Uh, it ultimately came up really well and he admires uh, till date that, you know, this is probably, I wouldn't have imagined. Uh, so, at you know, at a point, rather than educating him, we did it on site when he was not there. <laughs> so, for me, it's sometimes difficult to convince the clients. It's really like, uh, okay, end of the site, you can say. Sometimes really till 80% the work is done, they're like, hey, what is this? What is this? Let it get completed, then we can see it. And we have to, every time we have to convince them, like, like what material you have to use it, it's always like natural stone. If you compare with the tile, so okay, you say, we have to give example, like, like gold is gold and one gram is one gram. So you wear gold or one gram. So many times, <laughs> what you want to prefer, like sometimes it's always a natural beauty, like using a marble or using a veneer. So it gives a beauty to your house and that's it. It's uh, facing problems sometimes and sometimes the clients are more educated by Pinterest and everything <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> that is a major problem. That yeah. Is a major problem. <laughs> that is a challenge. For me, I think so after listening to all these, uh, your talks, I feel, I feel that I got a very decent clients <laughs> so far, so I don't think so. We uh, uh, were struggling for the convincing the clients and all, or maybe uh, sometimes we are little uh, more strict about it. And then they, what you say that they afterward the end result is good, so they like it. I'll share a very interesting process that I learned at Edifice, and I now use it in my practice. So I, 
uh, you know, resonate with Sarang when he said client education. So at Edifice, uh, and you, I, I do that in my practice also, that whenever we are going to present the material palette, a lot of time is spent in studying about the material and doing the thorough homework about the material. Uh, so that even if, in a very, very scientific way, so that the client is told the complete dissection of that material. Then there is this mock-up process that we follow. But many times, you know, you, especially in corporates, you know, you convince, let's say, up to the vice president level, but the president has never been met. So that's where we also do a personality analysis. So in one this project where I talked about rat trap bond, we use brick jallies. Uh, some there was some me mental mindset by the president that he didn't want jallies because he was thinking that jallies block view, and they, he was not understanding that they filter air and you know compress uh, hot air. So we did a little bit of study, and I found a common link that. Uh, so I'm a student of yoga. Iyengar Yoga and he is also a student of yoga. So I told him that, sir, see, everybody comes here to learn yoga and then goes back. And we are not ready to use what we have. <laughs> then he got curious. <laughs> so this, these are some ways to, you know, understand the personality and then address and, and kind of solve. So that sometimes you have to take that client education in a little tactful way. Uh, but I guess it's, see, at the end of the day, the client is investing the money, he has every, he or she has every right of questioning and sometimes our egos come in middle, you know, so there we have to play a proper balancing act, right. Okay, so we are now slowly going towards the end of the Q&A, uh, so I will take up the last question and then we could have some generic points on the table. So going forward, uh, uh, you know, how do you think we can integrate this philosophy with the responsibility of sustainability? Because sustainability, as you all know, it cannot be a matter of option. Uh, resources are depleting every day. Um, and uh, you are seeing, you know, different climate change patterns. Summers are longer, rainfall patterns are longer, winters are going to be longer. So surely there should be a collective effort by the design fraternity to, you know, bring in this layer of sustainability when we are looking at any new theme and especially this theme of old meets new. So I'd like to have your thoughts, starting with Umesh. Uh, absolutely right. The ecology is changing a lot, world, and there are new uh, subjects and words are coming up with GHG greenhouse gases and there are many things in UN also our government government is signing uh, many things uh, first of all I feel with the modernization it is required yes I agree but uh, the art is dying and in, in uh, being uh, in a fraternity it is our duty to keep our art alive Along with, yes, environment and uh, culture and of course modern, modernity is required for the progress. So this is a, uh, uh, our responsibility to keep our art alive. So sure. Frankly, using natural product like stone, it could always give you a cool look. Even if it's hot summer, the temperature will be controlled in your place, your residence or maybe a bungalow or maybe in the mandir. Anytime you go to a mandir, like always you get a cool temple because it's made in a stone, natural stones. Mm -hmm. Natural material, you can, anytime you use it, it will always control the temperature, like for its summers, cool, everywhere. And it's easy to maintain it. There are no chips or something. It's just polish it or just it's retain the main thing. So using of material will impact a lot in future for exp uh, this thing, climate variations. Yeah. And like P even POP, nowadays people are using gypsum sheets. It's of paper. And if you uh, use POP sheets, so it, even it controls the temperature for POP sheets and everything. So using of material will affect a lot. 
according to me so i remember back in uh, 2004 i suppose or 2005 we did one uh, corporate office for one of the multinationals and uh, it was uh, uh, we could actually get gold rating for the interiors and those days you know it i mean we were also not so uh, you know uh, we were not aware what we have done because uh, we never approached design with that kind of sustainability uh, sustainability then uh, but that process has given us uh, some kind of you know awareness about the materials which we use and the carbon footprint and uh, which material where it is being transported and stuff so after that it is definitely been into our practice that we try and see that we can use local materials like you know basalt or public kota and rather than importing you know marble all the way from italy and stuff many high end villas we have uh, done in kota and uh, um, uh, shahabad also Uh, with leather finish, so that you you know the the finish also gives you that kind of feel of that particular material being used for 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 a longer period. Though we are fitting it today, uh, you just give leather finish, and you, suddenly you will feel like you know taking out your shoes and you know putting your feet on the on the stone, and you know just feel uh, the stone, the material. So. Uh, apart from you know the sustainability what i think is we need to be responsible towards the material also mm. so many times i i tell uh, my team that you know you must feel the material you know usko shungo usko touch karo touch be not necessary you know you're touching it by your hands you can touch it uh, uh, with your face also mm. so the material st- material will start talking to you and then you will probably understand which material should be used where and how so that's that's what our philosophy has been uh, during our years so far yeah yeah so uh, <clears throat> the philosophy of the material would always believe uh, there are two types of material which we are using an interior and we are using an out- outside so the sustainability what you are talking about uh, the material which gives you uh, long lasting things that is what uh, your sustainably uh, uh, strong material second one is how you feel is very important and what are the characteristics what that material is comes from is very important for us uh recently i'm doing one big project in raipur this is almost uh, 28 acres this is almost 280 bungalows i'm doing so right from the design uh, uh, uh we can say uh the plot zoning to end of the project including landscaping i designed it so we use a natural material over there we use uh, natural resources over there we use rain har- harvesting uh, uh, a plant over there and very beautiful thing what i have added in that which you know we had a lot of research for that we uh, uh, we made one solar garden <coughs> so one dedicated area is a garden and we made a complete look like a tree and those are like solar and entire uh, uh, campus was you know treated uh, and getting the electricity from that solar so that is what the sustainability for uh, normally i uh, use in my uh, designs and we just you know give the clients solutions and we save the money and using the uh, you know uh, eco friendly and environmentally friendly uh, design uh, actually i believe in simple principle if you are responsive to climate if you are responsive to environment if you are responsive to context you become sustainable and if you are responsive to cost you become economical so this is a simple uh, i think and you should have a uh, capacity to convert the complicated things into simplest form uh, which is very easy to i easy for construction easy for maintenance i think best example is architect charles coria because uh, he was having great capacity to convert all complicated issues into simplest form and his structures are sustainable So and, fi- and finally what is sustainability it, it is a uh, t- the effort to create efforts for the uh, social well being that is the ultimately this thing right yes i completely agree so we have also you know we are spending a lot of time at ngk questioning why you need air conditioning you know and how the skin of the building for example insulates the inside because air conditioning as you all know is 75% of our operating electricity yes. cost and then that's where these techniques like rat trap bond or insulated walls and so on and so forth come 
we're also spending quite a lot of time on how we can save water. Mm. Uh, basically, all the five elements of nature, you know. So if you take uh, air, uh, water, uh, uh, the fire element, if you take the earth element and space element. And um, every time we work on a project, whether it is a corporate client or a small client or mid-sized client, we develop a customized green agenda for that project. And a lot of it has to talk to the materials. So we try to borrow from old wisdom, the old mm -hmm. techniques that are there, which are so beautifully, you know, uh, showcasing that this is how it was so graceful to live and it, this was the sustainable way. We try to borrow from that. Uh, clients, some clients are receptive, some are not. But I think it's our responsibility, so we do it. Yes, so I think, yes, uh, we've had a very good uh, panel discussion. A lot. I learned a lot. Yeah. We too. We also. <laughs> Thanks to Marino and him. Uh, <laughs> <my client. laughs> and, uh, so uh, I think we've had very interesting discussions. Uh, some very good points have come out. I've learned a lot from what I've heard. And uh, I think these kind of discussions are required where all of us from the profession need to step back and take an overview of where we are going. And this particular topic of old meets new is something which uh, is inconsistent, it is lacking. So it's, it's more opportune than now that we can discuss, deliberate and I'm, hope, I'm sure that the curation of this panel discussion will lead to some very interesting event or strategies in the near future. So in that light, I would like to sincerely thank Marino and Foyd for you know, making this possible because it takes a lot to organize things like this and, you know, carve out a platform, as they say. So with this, I think we'll end the panel discussion. Thanks for your time and patience and, and wonderful contribution. Thank you.